I so often do great big pieces and transform them, but let's transform this flea market vase. You can, maybe you can see, I got it for $5. Let's just totally transform this into something that's amazing and kind of a, a showstopper, just something really gorgeous for their home. So first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to clean it. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this tag. It's just a little woven vase with a metal top. I'm using Myers um, cleaning. I'm using Myers um, cleaning, but I mean you can use whatever you want, vinegar and water if you want. You can use any chalk paint you want. I'm using Ritikit. I use it quite a bit. I like several brands of chalk paint, um, but you can use whatever you want. I am doing this at my dining room table. It's just gonna be a simple project. You kind of want to go around your little edges and sides for drips. That's it. I mean, paint it in like three minutes, maybe two. Okay, it has been about 20, 15, 20 minutes. This is mostly dry. It has a little bit that it's still a, a little bit damp in some areas, but I don't care. So what I'm doing is I'm going over it with Rust-Oleum Metallic Accents and the color is Gold Mine. This is my go-to gold for most of my furniture. Sometimes I use a gold wax, but most of my furniture accent pieces, picture frames, when I want to do gold, I just really look at that color. It's just real pretty. I'm going to have some of that showing through. Um, on this, the chalk paint is acting like a primer because it's porous. So I wouldn't, and I also like some of that, that color peeking through. Some of the color underneath of the chalk paint. But uh, you don't want to put paint the metallic on. You don't want to paint the metallic on without like a chalk paint or a primer. It just, it won't adhere very well. It won't bond. And again, this is just taken like a minute or two. And that is all done. Now we let this dry. Probably about 20 minutes. This is what it looks like after the gold has, it's mostly dry right now. And so now comes the fun part. We're going to fill this up and we're going to do it pretty naturally. So all I'm doing is just going around my farm. It's spring. There's not a lot of blooms out, but there are just some shrubs and some fruit trees. This is a, a tree that's just got some pretty white blooms. And we're going to go around and just, we're going to forage to make a beautiful, wild looking, like wild and natural, uh, just very fun, cottagey type of gorgeous centerpiece to go in our flea market base.
so far I've just collected some thin branches from a fruit tree but just my luck I spotted some a wild bunch of daffodils we've kind of been mowing around them they're on the forest edge and so most of the daffodils have gone on but I'm gonna grab some of these and our little collection of foraging for our centerpiece is growing. So I'm kind of just looking around to see if there's anything. Sometimes you'll find something wild and pretty growing along the fence line or, you know, something will sprout up. And this is our walking path that walks down along the fence line. and. It's kind of glancing through the forest and it looks like we're going to have to go up by the house. There is the dog house that Louis has been building. It's all done but the roof. So I took a few branches from this a bush on the side of the house, just a greenery bush. It's kind of a, a just super bright colors and now I am just clipping from some vines and also from some overgrown, some boxwoods. They're just kind of grown. You know, I, they're, they're not like super pristine trimmed. They're not even really trimmed at all. My mom's always saying, you need to trim those boxwoods, but I kind of like them grown and shrubby looking. And so it's just neat to go out and be able to clip some greenery from them when I want to. So we are just going through here and l putting the branches down into the water cup. It's a tall cup, so it goes oh about three quarters of the way up the base, maybe a little over half. And I'm just working on picking out my tallest branches. We have some from the fruit trees right now. And you can see if you, you wanted to do, do something simple like this, you could stop right here and it would just be really beautiful and simple and fresh and clean. I love the uh, boxwood greenery. Boxwood greenery, the faux greenery that's sold at stores is pretty expensive. And so I like letting mine, I don't need them all precise cut like just overgrowing and being able to take some clippings from it. So what we're doing, we're just adding things in just pretty naturally and not too super styled i really like just the um kind of the unstyled where it does go in and fit but it also has you let it just take on a little life of its own and see what it's going to develop to be again here is another stopping point you could stop close to here maybe even out some of your heights. If you had so a smaller fun. vase, it would look real pretty. But just foraging for some wild, wild plants and branches and greenery and letting it um, turn into just what it's gonna be inside a vase can be really beautiful. I'm adding this status. And so we bought this status about a week ago when we were just out antiquing and stuff and we came across this and I bought some and took it home, put it in a vase. The beautiful thing about this is it status dries very pretty, very beautifully. It retains very well as a dried floral. 
So it's a it's a great flower to buy and still to get a ton of life and beauty from it. So now we're coming in with the last little bits, and these are just a, a handful of daffodils, and they look so pretty against the, the purple. If you have nothing but greenery, it'd be beautiful, but the little color of the purple and the white of the daffodils just really give it um, just a lot of just real pretty color and contrast with the white and purple against the green and some focal points. So I went through and I tried it out at a few different places in my home. It's just my little breakfast nook and I liked it there, but it wasn't enough contrast. So I put it in my living room on a small little accent table and it did look very fresh there, but I ended up settling on the dining room table, which is where I was to begin with. It was pretty in the living room, but it seemed more suitable just for the style it was in the dining room. Plus, because it has water in it, I did not want my dogs knocking it over, which would have been possible on the other table. And so this whole thing from painting the vase to finding all of the florals and greenery and putting it together took about, oh, maybe 45 minutes of time. And I ended up with just a really stunning centerpiece for my dining room for spring. And it all just came from foraging and from using what I had on hand, plus a $5 vase and that gold metallic paint painted over that light icy blue kind of violet paint just led to a real natural, pretty light springtime color for the vase. 